Sacred Places, The Western Wall, by Dylan Verard. The Western Wall is all that remains of an ancient wall that was built around the Temple Mount and the Second Temple in Jerusalem. The wall was built around 19 to 20 BCE, and, according to the historian Josephus, the wall took 11 years to build, during which it only rained at night as to not disrupt the workers. This, of course, may be more superstition than actual fact. The temple, and all but the western wall, was destroyed by the Romans in 70 CE. The Temple Mount today is owned by Muslims and houses the Al-Aqsa Mosque, as well as the Dome of the Rock. As a result, the western wall is the last great holy place for the Jewish people. The western wall is in the heart of Jerusalem, situated adjacent to, west of, the Temple Mount and the Dome of the Rock. Although the term Western Wall commonly refers to only the 187-foot exposed section where most of the prayer and conflict occurs, the wall actually runs for 1,600 feet and is mostly covered by buildings. Here we see the layout of Jerusalem and the Western Wall, with the arrow indicating the area commonly called the Western Wall, and the bold line indicating the full length of the Western Wall. The Western Wall, or Kotel as it is called in Hebrew, is the last remnant of the ancient temple of the Jewish people. The plaza in front of the wall acts as an open-air synagogue, and many Jews worldwide make trips to pray at the wall. According to tradition, the wall has served as a place where Jews could mourn the destruction and loss of the Second Temple, thus earning it the name, the Wailing Wall. It is customary when praying at the wall to leave prayer notes in the cracks of the wall. Muslims have dubbed the wall the Al-Barak Wall. The wall is named for Muhammad's winged steed, Barak, which he tied to the wall. While not nearly as important as other Muslim holy sites, the wall is a significant step in Muhammad's journey. There is, however, some debate as to which wall is the Al-Barak Wall, though popular belief is that it is in the same location as the Western Wall. During the time of Christian control of the Holy Land, the area around the wall was treated without respect, and used as a jumping ground. In more recent times, respect for the wall has grown significantly, with both Pope John Paul II and Pope Benedict visiting to leave prayer notes in the cracks of the wall. Many groups of Christians now see the wall as an important religious site as well because of the part it plays in the common history of Jews and Christians. The term Wailing Wall is most common among Christians, and it is likely that they coined the term. To understand why the Western Wall was built in Jerusalem, we must understand why Jews inhabited Jerusalem during its construction and how Jerusalem came to be. Jerusalem was built by the Jesuits around 2600 BCE, in the land that the Israelites considered to be their own. However, it was not until 11th century BCE that the Israelites, led by David, would actually conquer Jerusalem and declared the capital of Israel. David's successor, Solomon, built the first temple to house the Ark of the Covenant, until the Babylonians destroyed the temple in 587 BCE. Then, in 516 BCE, the Jews returned and built the second temple on the Temple Mount. Around 19 BCE, the wall finally came into being when King Herod remodeled the temple. Ownership of the wall is a matter of significant debate. Both Jews and the nation of Israel, as well as the Muslim clergy, claim ownership. Jews see the basis of their ownership in their historic ownership of the Holy Land and in the 1967 recapture of the wall. Muslims see the basis of their ownership in their ownership of the Temple Mount and the al Aska Mosque. This wall is seen as part of the Temple Mount and thus part of the property. Many Muslim authorities, as part of a larger campaign, seek to remove Jewish attachment to monuments in Israel and instill Muslim attachment, perhaps in the hopes that it will bring about a new Palestine through social consent. Many prominent Muslims will even go so far as to deny that Jews ever had any attachment to the wall prior to 1917 and that the practice of wailing and praying at the wall is a modern advent. Often, the state has conflicts with various sects or believers of Judaism and how one can worship at the wall. Normally, it is expected that women who worship at the wall are separate from men, do so silently, and do so alone. The group, Women of the Wall, often attempts to conduct a prayer service only to have police arrive. Here we see Anata Hoffman, chairwoman of Women of the Wall, clinging to her Torah while the police attempt to take it from her. Fortunately, there is a section of the wall set aside for people who wish to worship in their own way, 
but there is competition for space and registered time slots. I chose the Western Mall because of what a strong symbol it is, and the fact that it is the last remaining link to the Temple Mount. It is in the very heart of the Holy Land, and therefore at the very heart of the controversy that is there. Plus, I really wanted to use this picture of Will Smith. Sacred space has long been considered the best way to get closer to God. These places seem to enhance the feelings of peace one attains in worshipping. But this project has taught me something surprising. These places enhance emotions in general, including hatred and prejudice. Indeed, it is this fight over places that deepens the divide between groups. In the end, there is both a positive and negative side to sacred spaces. Doing without them goes against human nature, but continuing the practice only creates the opportunity for further conflict.